Hi everyone! This is an introduction to mutations. The video is going to provide an overview of what mutations are and the general types of effects they can have, and in class we'll go into more detail and work through some examples. Let's start by defining mutations. In the most general sense, a mutation is a change in a DNA sequence. There are many types of changes that can occur, and sometimes they're even as simple as just swapping one nucleotide for another. So in this example down here, we have a DNA sequence of nucleotides here in which one nucleotide, this cytosine, the letter C, gets swapped for a letter T. So it could be something as simple as that. Why do mutations matter? Why do we care? It all has to do with the function of DNA and what it codes for. If a mutation causes a change in DNA and that DNA gets transcribed into mRNA, then that mRNA will also have the change in it. When that mRNA gets translated, it might result in a different amino acid sequence. And then because the specific sequence of amino acids determines the exact way in which a protein folds up into its final 3D structure, that could result in a change in the shape of the final protein. And then you know that a protein's exact 3D structure is what determines its function. So if its shape has changed, then its function may change or be lost as well. In an example, here we have a membrane transport protein. So you can see that it's embedded in the plasma membrane and its job is to transport materials into or out of the cell. If there were a mutation in the DNA that coded for this protein such that it changed shape to have a blob at this end, it would no longer function, would not be able to allow materials to pass. In another example, if there is an enzyme that has this specific shape with this active site that's designed to work with this substrate, if there were a mutation in the DNA that coded for this enzyme such that it folded slightly differently and the active site took on this shape, it would no longer be able to fit that substrate. So you might be thinking to yourself, hey, that's really bad. Mutations must be a really bad thing. And they can be. But are mutations always bad? And the answer is no, because mutations can introduce new traits into populations. And these new traits can be harmful, neutral, or beneficial. For example, blue eyes in humans. We think that this arose due to a mutation in one human less than 10,000 years ago. And as you know, this is not generally a super harmful mutation. It doesn't kill everyone who has it. So mutations can be good, they can be bad, or they can just be kind of in between. Now, because mutations can introduce new traits into a population, they are a source of genetic diversity and variation. For example, the fur of these Icelandic horses can occur in different colors. You can see some of them are very dark, some of them are very pale, and then there are other colors in between. These different colors probably arose through various mutations that appeared throughout the evolutionary history of these horses. Last semester, we discussed the process of natural selection, and you learned that it requires both overproduction of offspring and variation between individuals. Well, where do you think that variation comes from? Yeah, you guessed it. Generally, it comes from mutations. So the new traits that are created by mutations are an important source of the variations that make natural selection possible. Now let's take a closer look at specific types of mutations. And there are two general types of mutations that you're going to need to know. The first one is substitution, which is exactly what it sounds like. This is what happens when one nucleotide gets replaced by another in a DNA sequence. For example, the sequence ATTCGA might have one letter swapped out to become ATTAGA. In terms of the effect that this might have on the protein that that DNA codes for, it has a wide range. It could have no effect or it could have a really severe effect. And it all depends on what the exact change is, which letter is changing, and where in the DNA sequence it's occurring. To illustrate this, I'm going to use a really simple example. Here I have a sentence made of all three letter words, and I'm using three letters because codons in mRNA that get translated into amino acids each have three letters. So if you were to read this sentence, you know what it means. The cat ate one rat. All right, well what if we had a mutation, a substitution mutation, that swapped out this C for the letter K? If someone were to read this sentence to you, still means the same thing. So if we're equating the meaning of the sentence to the function of a protein, this would have no effect on the function of the protein. 
If we had a slightly different mutation that changed that same letter C to, say, a B, that's going to have a different meaning. You can see that some of it is still the same. We still have one rat that's meeting its demise, but it's a slightly different thing that's happening. So this might equate to a, a change in the function of the protein. Maybe it still kind of works. But if we had still another type of substitution that swapped a different letter, maybe it swapped out the A in 8 for a Z. Well, now if someone read this to you, you wouldn't know what that means. It's kind of gibberish. So this would uh, equate to something that really changes the function of the protein quite severely. So again, depending on what the substitution is and where it occurs, it could have no effect, a slight effect, or a really severe effect on the protein that the DNA codes for. The other general type of mutations you need to know about is insertion or deletion. Now this is what occurs when one or more nucleotides gets inserted into or deleted from a DNA sequence. An example of this would be the insertion of the letter A into the original sequence AGGCT, so it becomes AGGACT. And to illustrate this, I'm going to use the same simplified example with three letter words of the cat ate one rat. But instead of swapping out a letter, I'm going to insert a letter right here. And now it becomes this. Looking at this, you may think, hey, that's not very different. But you have to keep in mind that mRNA codons are read in triplets. So when the cell interprets this sentence, it's going to start its next three letter word with a V and it'll become VCA. And so what the cell will actually see is something that would look more like this. So what's happened here is the codon reading frame, the triplet reading frame has been shifted. And for this reason, insertion and deletion mutations are known as frame shift mutations. Now, if you take a look at the effect that this has had, the meaning, the original meaning is completely lost. This has become utter gibberish now. So if we equate that to the function of the protein, the change would be catastrophic. The function of the protein would be very much changed or completely lost. So that's a general introduction to mutations. In class, we'll take a look at some examples of mutations in actual DNA sequences and find out what kinds of effects they would really have. And we'll also discuss the various causes of mutations. So until next time, take care of yourself, take care of each other.